do the risk presentation. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to come here uh, to present uh, not what we have done, but what we more what we want to do. The data driven simulation of hospital architecture. Uh, this is a project I'm working on with uh, Thomas Mint again from St. Olaf's Eindom. And who am I? The question who is that guy in front of you? Um, I've done a, I'm Jan van Zwart, I've done a master in architecture with Delft University of Technology. I have worked for the Department of Landscape Architecture uh, uh, a few years doing uh, landscape architectural research and then moved to the Department of Real Estate Management to do a PhD on hospital architecture and started there also my master in healthcare management. So I'm talking from healthcare organization, how do you organize healthcare processes, how is the hospital as a building positioned in its context until the design of the hospital itself. Uh, 
uh, and then on one part you have the construction side, so the uh, people building it, facility management and the design team. But, and, but on the other hand, you have a different stake, the other stakeholders, you have the owner and the core business and the authorities and the public. They, these are the, the, this, is the, this is the part that wants to use the buildings. So this is temporary, the construction and design period. This is life cycle. This is time period that the building is there. You want to keep it accurate. So the real buildings the F of the uh, BIM model has to be a representation of the real buildings. And if you can censor it, so if you can build in sensors in reality, and you can start measuring, movement, for example, movement of equipment and people within the building, you can use it for modeling in the BIM model. So, what I'm talking about is uh, within the uh, life cycle of the building, um, I want to connect post occupancy evaluation. So, the, uh, it's evaluating the building when it's in use and use the data that you can collect of buildings that exist for design review. So, pre construction. Evaluation. So the design is there, the chain or for the existing buildings, you know how you want to change the building, but you will, before you are really building it, changing it, you want to test it. If the clinical, for a hospital, the clinical processes are better, more efficient in the other design. To do that, I uh, made a model, a conceptual model, how this can be connected. There's a lot of information at once, but I explain it during, <coughs> during the presentation. This model uh, consists of four parts. One part is hospital data. That is actual data from the administration of the hospital about patient, patient flow, movement of equipment, movement of um, people. Uh, uh, the second part is modeling, the possibility to change, to change things as they are. Third part is simulation data, and the last part is dashboard, which makes it possible to see what happens if you are modeling, if you are changing things. So what about project data, the hospital data? This one? Yes. This is uh, the Baas Hospital in Switzerland, uh, in which you see all people moving in and out of the hospital in just two days. So it's mo movement uh, of patients between departments, and uh, now it's becoming night, so there are less patients. And so this is the morning, so all the elective patients come in and the emergencies come in and they go out and the daily patients go in and out and the outpatients, the new outpatients come in and so these are just the movements of two days. And what can we do with this data? We can try to track it more carefully, <coughs> better. Uh, this is a research done by John Parsley. Uh, this is the campus of uh, the NCLU in uh, the university where I work. Actually, my room is over here. Um, and um, what they do here is uh, tracking mobile phones. So, using the Wi Fi network to start with to track uh, the, the mobile phones who are there and creating a hot map of the areas that are used, more, more or less. Uh, uh, this is, uh, we are now working on making this more accurate, so, uh, and also being able to trace one phone, for example. So in the end, uh, the St. Olaf's Hospital is also working on uh, tracking devices, for example, on the beds or on the food cars, for example. There are thousands of those cars delivering the food around the hospital. Uh, some departments say there are too less. Some of the departments say there are too many and the facility management 
doesn't know where all the stars are. And they want to know it, they want to track it, and they want to use, uh, they want to use it more efficiently. Um, so what um, the, the data the movement within the hospital uh, can also be analyzed not connected. So we are talking today a lot about uh, 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 visibility, movement, uh, using space syntax to analyze uh, architectural or urban surrounding, but you can also uh, move, uh, analyze uh, movement uh, loosened from their architecture uh, surrounding. And that's what's happening here. This is an analysis that is done by the Fachhochschule Nordwest Schweiz. Um, and this is the Inselspital, so this is a big university campus. And these are all the departments of that uh, of the university hospital. And all the movement of patients between those departments. So what you see here in yellow is just the movement of one patient. Um, and here you see it in uh, in the architectural layout. And um, here in the middle, that is what they call a gravity model. So they choose one department in the middle, and all the other departments move around it, looking. Uh, depending on the amount of movements to that department, what the best connection to all other departments could be. And I want to see if this one works too. Uh, they do it with XMAN, that is uh, a software application they have written themselves. Um, and here you see all the departments and the movements between uh, the different uh, 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 all, uh, between the different departments within the hospitals. Around here you see the in and out flow of patients, and you can see from every department. So if you click on one department over here, for example, what's now doing, you see the movement out from that department to all other departments. Uh, they, can, uh, they have the possibility to zoom in, you can see the difference between departments. So some departments are very connected to other departments, others are less connected. Um, so for example, this is the emergency department, but here this is the children department. And that is very closely, that's the, is not connected to a lot of different other departments. <coughs> So then you see that there are some clusters that belong to each other and departments that can be more separated from others. Um, just let it run for a moment. There's also this possibility to zoom in in one department and to see what's happening within there. That's what's happening here. So you can also see the functions within one department. How the movement is there. Now it's going to the gravity model. Yes, the systematic map. So then you choose one department and you say what is the connection to all other departments to this one department. So and then you see all the connections and you see also the interconnections to the other departments who are less or more important to them. Then, instead of for every department you pick on, 
the in and out flow of patients. So you know exactly how many patients are going out of the, this department and how many patients are going into this department. And you expect that it's, it's similar. Um, so and then you know also also the difference between in and out, and you know how much what your capacity is you need for in this case that's uh, in the hospital. And also here you have the possibility to zoom in. So this is the line. So you can see what's happening. Maybe you can also zoom in, I think they are going to do it now, uh, on just one data for all one patient. data to uh, generate simulation data 
to see what happens for your organization. Do I need more or less nurses? Um, can I uh, improve my capacity? Can I handle more patients? But if you cannot change the architectural layout, you may, you maybe you can change the clinical process. Just so the following order of the steps that the patient has to take from the moment he gets into the hospital to the moment he or she can leave the hospital. So can we combine certain steps? So or should we separate one step to make it more efficient for the organization? Um, and what you also can do is model patient flow. So you're 80% of the clinical processes in the hospital can be planted somehow, even emergencies. You don't know what kind of emergency comes, but you know always for certain uh, that there's always a certain amount of emergencies. So, but uh, still, uh, besides that, there's also a lot that you can, uh, for example, uh, knees and hips operations have different consequences for the patients in terms of how long they are in the hospital. So by planning them, you can uh, use your capacity of your hospital much better. And you can then, um, and this should be possible to use uh, within the BIM model to see how your capacity of your hospital infrastructure is used or overused or underused. So in the end, I want to be able to do pre-occupancy evaluation. Uh, this is uh, uh, part of the last part of my thesis on uh, hospital architecture in which I use uh, web, web map, uh, software to analyze the data of the hospital, as a hospital in the Netherlands. And it was just to test, uh, to see what this kind of software uh, can mean for designing a hospital. But this is on visibility, this is on connectivity. And I want, I want to go in the direction that, that this agent-based modeling is based on patient flows. So, so the flows that are really in the hospitals, not on geometry of uh, the design, but on the geometry of the patient flows. So, to summarize, an overall framework using the hospital data for modeling, using those models to simulate, to make simulations based on the data, and to have a dashboard to see uh, what this means for your organization. This is the part of the presentation where I always start to scream, help! <laughs> because this is what I can. I can what I, I know what I want. I know what I want to achieve. I don't know how we can get there. Because it asks, this demands a very interdisciplinary approach. Analyzing data, knowing what you're talking about in the clinical process. BIM models, architectural layout, clinical processes, how you can generate um, the processes of patients, patient flow modeling, how you can model the planning of patients, but also how you can generate from movement data, so how you can generate simulation data, which is usable for making simulations of architecture layouts. But what we do with that is a big new model of the hospital itself. So St. Olaf's Hospital uh, wants uh, to be the first hospital that has a life cycle BIM that stays accurate. So they want to have a BIM model um, that is uh, changed every time there's something changed in the building. So it's not about only a construction project, it is for using it. They want to use it, for example, for uh, in the, maybe in the end, for planning and cleaning services. But also other things. So the model, uh, this is the outpatient departments uh, of the whole hospital and all the rooms. And just to give a view, 
this is one department with all the rules. Uh, and when I'm talking about this, I almost see the nurses running around here, the patients lying in the bed. We just need a way finding of how making that visible. In a way that's connected to the patient flow modeling, I showed what they did in the in hospital. So that brings me back again to what I want to do. And I've only talked about this part, the hospital's infrastructure. So the hospital in which, in which clinical process are, should be efficient and effective. And I want to conclude this presentation with an invitation to help me. <laughs> so I'm looking to uh, what I want to do in that is uh, we are looking to the possibility to write a cost action that is uh, in the European uh, program uh, on this topic. So how you can uh, use the BIM model but also space syntax uh, way of thinking uh, because it's also about movement of people, it's also about agent-based modeling uh, connected to uh, clinical uh, data uh, and uh, so I want to build up a consortium to work on this um, uh, I have already three, we have already three partners uh, in Norway, in the Netherlands and in Switzerland so <laughs> Very welcome next year. <laughs> Thank you very much.